Hey guys, it is nice to see you again. Welcome to another Lucky Score video. I have got a new microphone, the Audio Technica ATR3350. I hope this will get rid of the noise that my camera hard drive makes. It is picked by some of my microphone setups and it's quite annoying. Back on the topic, I have scored those 11 graphics cards early HP2X and some 4X models for 20 euros. This accounts approximately to 21 US dollars. Uh, before I start my review, however, look at some computer caveman skiing. After me crashing on a vacation last week, it is time to go back to business. I have sorted those cards by what I think their performance is. I will call this a Cavebench 3D Index. You may think differently, of course, and this could spawn a discussion in the comment section. I would be happy to read your feedback and your personal order list. And then we will see who is right when I do some actual testing. Uh, more about when and how this testing will happen, you can see later in this video. That said, I am going to start with uh, three members of the Crushing Disappointment Club. As you can see, they are separated and guarded by some infantry in order for them not to escape and spread their mediocrity among the others. First in my list uh, and respectively slowest, uh, the S3 Verge uh, GX2, made in this case by Number 9 Technologies. Uh, that's the S3 Verge uh, series flagship and it is even using AGP bus. It has 4 megabytes of uh, SG RAM video memory clocked around 100 MHz and a graphical processor working at about the same frequency as well. However, guys, uh, poor performance, poor features and poor drivers, even this uh, being one of the fastest uh, Verge models, it is still nowhere near good enough to remove the Verge's label decelerator. ATI Rage 2C AGP, very close to performance with the Verge line and the second best so cheap in 1996 after it. Performance-wise, uh, those two are actually on par, but I'm going to place the Rage uh, just above the Verge because it achieves this horrible performance by operating on lower frequencies. Thus, uh, something deep inside in here is done better. 60 MHz core, uh, this car here uses EDO memory, so it's slower, uh, but it could use up to 83 MHz of fast SG RAM video memory. The graphical processor is actually a revised Mach 64 with uh, two times the performance. Uh, it also has better drivers than the Mach 64, but still has problems in that area. Unuseful extra on some models, uh, not on this one, uh, but some had an uh, MPEG-2 decoder to offload uh, CPU usage when watching DVDs. Uh, that was a useful extra, especially on uh, slow computers. Since uh, 6326, uh, this thing sold more than 80 million units and at the end of its life uh, they have even integrated it in the CIS 530 chipset and on some set PC chips motherboards. Chip was clocked at around 80 MHz and it had poor drivers, uh, was sometimes bundled with poor EDO memory at 50 MHz, uh, such as in our case, and even then it could outperform the Verge GX2 by several percent. Uh, there were versions with around 70 and even 100 MHz clock memory, which were of course faster. Anyway, uh, there wasn't a proper OpenGL driver and the Direct3D support came too late. Uh, not that that was a big problem because you couldn't play properly with it in uh, 640 by 480 resolutions anyway. The speed of memory chips uh, used to be indicated in speed index labeled on them, 
uh, mostly on EDO memories and then you can uh, check uh, what the actual speed is in the data sheets by using the speed index uh, then in SD RAM and SG RAM memory modules such as here uh, the speed is indicated in nanoseconds you can see on the module after the dash uh, the value is 10 nanoseconds uh, some cards as this Voodoo 2 uh, has the memory speed written on the memory chip 110 megahertz rated memory uh, this is one of the fastest Voodoo 2s but I'm not going to review it today because it's not a part of this lucky score uh, the L2 pilots would also give you the formula to convert megahertz to nanoseconds and vice versa first card outside our crushing disappointment club uh, the Trident 9880 uh, this is not the Trident 9750 which was called by Trident a second generation 3D accelerator and it was ultra crappy actually the 9750 is a member of the crushing disappointment club uh, but this isn't uh, this is the full blown Trident Fireblade 3D I will give them 10 points for cool name uh, both chip and memory are clocked above 100 megahertz uh, it's light years better than the 9750 and actually this card is on par or a bit better than the Intel 740 but because it is more expensive than the 740 I have put it lower in the list speaking of the Intel 740 here it is uh, it came to this world with a lot of hype and was designed to showcase the new AGP interface uh, it does not store textures locally it stores them all in the system memory uh, this is a new feature that was introduced with AGP uh, the ability to store textures in system memory uh, this is not common in graphics card uh, most cards have texture memory on board and use AGP to store textures in system memory uh, when that memory is not sufficient uh, but the Intel 740 stores uh, texture in system memory only prices were great uh, but AGP machines were expensive and uncommon uh, so they have made a PCI version as well it had PCI bridge and added memory for storing textures overall image quality was great uh, but some drivers cheated in order to achieve better performance in synthetic tests so Volkswagen you are not alone in cheating performance wise it's a bit faster than a Riva 128 and it grandsons lift as the integrated graphics in the Intel 810 and later revisions in Intel 815 chipsets for Pentium 3 in general the 740 was more of a disappointment than a success uh, if it was not made by Intel it was going to fail spectacularly but low prices and Intel kept it floating and uh, guys uh, look at this sweet little card it's absolutely tiny uh, this is the Nvidia Vanta chip clocked and memory clocked at around 100 megahertz uh, but this is the LT version uh, low power and clocked lower at 80 megahertz the Vanta is basically an entry-level uh, Riva TNT era graphics accelerator uh, later variants uh, of the Vanta were low-cost uh, die shrink versions of the Riva TNT2 uh, sometimes uh, those were sold as NVIDIA TNT2 M64 and both had 64-bit uh, memory access after the Vanta the S3 Savage 4 again in LT version it is clocked lower at 110 megahertz for both graphical processor and video memory uh, in comparison a normal version are clocked in 125 megahertz for graphical processor and memory and there is a pro version in which the memory is clocked higher at 143 megahertz uh, although this is the LT version as I told you the memory is a 6 nanoseconds version uh, which is blazing 166 megahertz I will try to overclock it and destroy need for speed 3 at some point overall it is something like a bug fix version of the Savage 3D uh, with added new features of course and the Savage 3D was good on paper however it turned out to be a failure uh, but now when I say bug free uh, the drivers were still awful here uh, but at least they had a proper support for OpenGL and Direct3D remember how I told you about the NVIDIA TNT2 M64 
uh, in the review of the NVIDIA Vanta 2 cards ago. Uh, here it is, 64-bit uh, memory interface, 16MB uh, SD RAM uh, clocked at uh, 150MHz and the chip is clocked at 125MHz. Uh, mostly the chip is identical to the TNT2 in the part responsible for image quality uh, but quite uh, different in other areas. Uh, in this card uh, manufactured by MSI you can clearly see there is a TV out functionality provided by this Connexant chip. After those uh, crippled 64-bit cards it is time to go to a more serious contender. Uh, this is the ATI Rage 128 Pro. Uh, it's a successor to the original Rage 128 and this card is on par with NVIDIA TNT2, uh, the Matrox G400 and the Voodoo 3 2000. It is working at 125 MHz for the graphical processor and 143 MHz for the memory, but on those uh, settings uh, it fell short of the TNT2 Ultra, the G400 Max and the Voodoo 3 3500. Uh, you can see there is an ATI Rage uh, theater chip uh, which provides uh, video in and video out functionality. Right after the Rage 128 Pro, uh, the ATI Owen Wonder 128 Pro, uh, specification wise uh, it is the same uh, as the last card, uh, but this time uh, it has an integrated TV tuner. I have always liked uh, TV tuners and this is my most favorite card from the, this lucky score. I will definitely use it in some of my future builds. Last for today and therefore most powerful, the Radeon 7500. Uh, first Radeon and first ATI card with Transform and Lightning Engine. Uh, thus I'm gonna call the graphical processor a GPU. Unfortunately, by the way the memory is populated, you can clearly see that this is a 64-bit memory version. Uh, this card is a successor of the Rage 128 Pro and also introduced uh, some clever features like the Hyper-Z memory bandwidth optimization along with other goodies. GPU works uh, at 260MHz and the DDR memory is operating at 180MHz. Uh, this equals to 360 MHz operating SDRAM memory due to the way signaling in uh, double data rate memory works. What else? Uh, it supports DirectX 7 and OpenGL 1.3. That's all for today's episode guys. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, you know the drill. If you liked uh, this video press the thumbs up button. And if you would like to help me to rename my channel do subscribe. Uh, that said, I need to test those performance monsters I just showed you. For that, I will build an epic Pentium 3 Intel 440 Pachix powered Big Tower monster. Speaking of Big Towers, uh, stay tuned for my next lucky score. Until then, I wish you all the best guys. Mr. Caveman out.